The fuel that provides the power for these high-performance Indy race cars is methanol. Competition engines use methanol because it burns at relatively cool temperatures and its high octane rating provides optimum power output. Because methanol also burns very cleanly, the Ford Motor Company is introducing methanol as a fuel for passenger cars to help lower emissions. The first such car is this flexible fuel vehicle, FFV, a 1993 3.0-liter flex-fuel Taurus. This 1993 Taurus flexible fuel new model training video covers design, service, maintenance, and diagnosis. For additional service assistance, call the Ford National Technical Hotline at 1-800-826-4694. Let's begin with a definition of what we mean by flexible fuel. As the name implies, it means the 1993 Flex Fuel Taurus can run on 100% unleaded gasoline, or a mixture of unleaded gasoline and up to 85% methanol. A mixture of 85% methanol and 15% unleaded gasoline is called M85. This M85 blend of fuel is generally referred to as methanol fuel. M85 is the only methanol and gasoline mixture that will be available at service stations. Of course, since 100% unleaded gasoline may have been pumped at a previous service stop, the actual percentage of methanol in the fuel tank may vary. The option of using either unleaded gasoline or M85 will assure customers of fuel availability as we transition to alternative fuels such as methanol. Alternative fuels are necessary because of limited petroleum reserves and worldwide environmental concerns. The auto industry is entering a new era in which gasoline-powered engines will be supplemented by other energy sources. The Ford Motor Company is leading the way in the development of alternative-fueled vehicles. In addition to the 1993 Flex Fuel Taurus, Ford has a wide range of test fleets. In fact, the Ford Motor Company has more alternative-fueled vehicles on the road in North America than all other manufacturers combined. Many vehicles are under development because there is no one best fuel. Fuel choices, including gasoline, are a compromise of availability, price, energy content, emissions, safety, and other factors. Lower emissions and widespread availability are two of the reasons that methanol is being considered as an automotive fuel. Methanol can be made from natural gas or coal, both of which are widely available in North America. Methanol can also be made from wood chips, and garbage or virtually any organic material. Methanol, as you can see, is colorless. It's also odorless and pure methanol burns with a virtually colorless flame when viewed in bright light. When M85, which is 15% unleaded gasoline, is lighted, we see that it burns with a slightly yellow color, which can be an important safety factor. Here's one last point of interest concerning methanol. As you may know, it is one of the two most common types of alcohol. The other is ethanol, which is distilled from corn, sugar, and grains. Ethanol is the alcohol used in gasohol. Ethanol and methanol both have automotive applications, but the two have different properties. For example, methanol is much more corrosive, as we'll learn in a minute. Now, let's see how methanol compares with unleaded gasoline. Regular unleaded gasoline has an octane rating of 87, whereas pure methanol has a higher octane rating, about 105, which improves anti-knock qualities. There is also the potential for more power and engine efficiency. Combustion is more complete with methanol than gasoline, resulting in lower hydrocarbon emissions. M85 reduces ozone formation by about 50% compared to unleaded gasoline. On the downside, methanol produces less energy than gasoline. Methanol creates 57,000 BTUs per gallon, compared to 116,000 BTUs per gallon for gasoline. This means more fuel is required to drive a given distance. Miles per gallon will be lower with M85, but the cost per mile probably will be lower due to the anticipated lower price for M85. 
The Flex Fuel Taurus requires special methanol compatible materials because methanol is very corrosive to rubber and a variety of metals normally used in gasoline fuel systems. Methanol has a much lower vapor pressure or volatility than gasoline. If 100% methanol were used, starting would be difficult below approximately 50 degrees Fahrenheit. M85 provides easy starting under most conditions because it vaporizes sufficiently down to about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. A cold start assist system on the Flex Fuel Taurus helps start the car in extremely cold weather. Methanol is somewhat more toxic to humans than gasoline and small amounts of formaldehyde are created during cold engine startup. This does not suggest that there should be a greater concern than when working on gasoline-fueled vehicles, just that you should be aware of some special safety precautions. Refer to the first two pages of this program's reference book for details regarding handling procedures, warnings, and cautions for methanol fuel. Here is a recap of key points. When working around the fuel system, do not smoke or use any device with a flame. Wear methanol-resistant nitrile gloves. Prolonged or repeated skin contact with methanol fuel will cause skin irritation in most people. If contact with methanol fuel occurs, immediately wash hands with soap and water. Avoid inhaling vapors, as this may lead to irritation of the throat and respiratory tract. If you get methanol fuel in your eyes, remove contacts if worn and flush immediately with plenty of water for at least 15 minutes, then seek medical attention. Never swallow methanol fuel or siphon by mouth. As with gasoline, it is highly toxic and it may cause permanent injury, blindness, or death. If methanol fuel is swallowed, immediately call a doctor or poison control center. Finally, it should be noted that anyone taking antabuse medication may have an adverse reaction if they inhale methanol fuel or it contacts their skin. Now, please stop the tape here and answer review questions 1 through 3 in your reference book. We'll give the correct answers when you restart the tape. The correct answer to review question 1 is methanol fuel has a higher octane rating than unleaded gasoline. For question 2, the correct mixture for M85 methanol fuel is 85% methanol and 15% unleaded gasoline. The correct answer to question 3 is D, all of the above. Inhaling too much methanol fuel or gasoline vapors can lead to A, serious illness and permanent injuries such as blindness, B, eye and respiratory tract irritation, and C, skin irritation. Now, let's see how a flexible fuel system works and get acquainted with the components. Since the 1993 3.0-liter flex fuel Taurus runs on unleaded gasoline as well as methanol fuel, it follows that the system isn't really that much different from what you've seen before. If you could look through the body of a flex fuel Taurus, you would see most of the familiar components used on other Taurus models. One major difference is the widespread use of stainless steel and other methanol-compatible materials. Another major change is the use of a fuel pump and fuel injectors with the capacity to flow a greater volume of fuel. Higher flow rates are required because methanol burns richer than gasoline. The air-fuel ratio for methanol is 6.4 to 1, whereas gasoline is 14.7 to 1. Thus, as the percentage of methanol in the fuel tank increases, the volume of fuel must increase to achieve efficient combustion. New components unique to the Flex Fuel Taurus include a fuel sensor in the fuel line that measures the percentage of methanol in the fuel. There also is a new cold start assist system at the throttle body. You will also find that a new spark plug and a different engine oil are specified for the Flex Fuel Taurus. The fuel gauge in the instrument panel has been revised to indicate the percentage of methanol in the fuel. With that brief overview of what's new on the Flex Fuel Taurus, let's look at the new parts, beginning with the fuel sensor, which is located at the lower right side of the engine compartment. The fuel sensor detects the percentage of methanol in the fuel blend and sends a signal to the powertrain control module, PCM, formerly called the EEC-4 module. The PCM varies the air-fuel ratio and spark timing as the percentage of methanol in the fuel changes. 
Mounted on the same bracket with the fuel sensor is a new fuel mixer assembly. The fuel mixer assembly assures that the fuel sensor is receiving the same blend of unleaded gasoline and methanol as is in the fuel tank. A new cold start injector, CSI, and spray bar assembly is mounted to the throttle body assembly. When signaled by the PCM, the injector sprays additional fuel through the spray bar into the throttle body plenum chamber to improve cold weather starts. A new vapor management valve, VMV, is located in the engine compartment. Also new is a vapor control valve, VCV, located at the top right rear corner of the fuel tank. The vapor control and vapor management valves are both new for the Flex Fuel Taurus and are not used on any other vehicles. Function and operation of these valves will be covered later. Now, please stop the tape here and answer review questions 4 through 6 in your reference book. We'll give the correct answers when you restart the tape. The correct answer to review question 4 is, the cold start injector provides additional fuel to improve cold weather starts. For question 5, the correct answer is, the flexible fuel sensor detects the percentage of methanol in the fuel blend. The correct answer to question 6 is, components must be methanol compatible in the new Flex Fuel Taurus. Let's turn our attention from what's new to what's revised on the Flex Fuel Taurus, beginning with the fuel system. The fuel tank is slightly larger and is made of high-density polyethylene, which is compatible with methanol fuel. The filler neck has a methanol-resistant coating and features a special screen to prevent siphoning of fuel. A quick disconnect fitting on the fuel drain tap is used to drain the fuel tank. The in-tank fuel pump is controlled by two separate voltages. At 12 volts, it runs at full speed. When an inline resistor drops operating voltage to 9 volts, the pump runs at a slower speed to reduce noise, which can occur with certain blends of methanol fuels. The fuel pump features nickel plating, stainless steel, and other methanol-compatible materials to resist corrosion. To service the fuel pump, you must first remove the fuel tank. An inline fuel filter is located just behind the fuel tank. The fuel filter is similar to that used on unleaded gasoline cars. Filter materials are specially designed to be compatible with methanol. Methanol-compatible steel push connect fittings connect the fuel lines to the fuel pump and fuel drain tube in the fuel tank. Methanol-compatible spring lock couplings and O-rings connect the fuel lines to the cold start adapter and fuel supply manifold. Methanol-compatible nylon connectors are used to connect lines in the vapor management system. The fuel metering system functions just like a dedicated gasoline engine. The major difference is the use of methanol-compatible materials. The throttle body has been revised with a modified plenum chamber and designed to accept the new cold start injector and spray bar assembly. The fuel injectors operate in the same manner as dedicated gasoline injectors, except for their higher flow rate capacity. Flex Fuel Taurus fuel injectors and O-rings are methanol compatible. The injectors are color-coded green for easy identification. Now, please stop the tape here and answer review questions 7 through 9 in your reference book. We'll give the correct answers when you restart the tape. The correct answer to review question 7 is C. Flex Fuel Taurus fuel injectors are color-coded green. For question 8, the correct answer is B. The Flex Fuel Taurus has been modified for use with methanol by the addition of a cold start injector, CSI, and a modified throttle body plenum chamber. The correct answer to question 9 is B. The flexible fuel sensor is located in the engine compartment. Now, let's see what has been revised in the evaporative emissions, engine, and electrical systems on the Flex Fuel Taurus. The evaporative emission systems for the Flex Fuel Taurus functions much like the ones for dedicated gasoline engines. 
As previously noted, there is a new vapor management valve, VMV, which purges the carbon canisters, and a new vapor control valve, VCV, which senses the change in pressure within the fuel tank when the fuel filler cap is removed. The VCV closes the flow of vapor from the vapor rollover valves to the carbon canisters, thus preventing liquid from entering the carbon canister during refueling. The charcoal canister has been enlarged and modified. Four canisters are housed in a protective tray under the spare tire carrier. The four canisters provide increased vapor capacity and flow. All components are made of methanol-compatible materials to resist corrosion. Various electrical components also have been revised. For example, the powertrain control module, remember that's what we used to call the EEC-4 module, has an additional fuel sensor input and an additional cold start output. The 3.0 liter engine that powers the Flex Fuel Taurus is equipped with an electronic distributorless ignition. System components are similar to those used on other Ford Motor Company vehicles. Here, for example, is the ignition coil. The crankshaft position, CKP sensor, that provides crankshaft position and speed information is located at the crankshaft damper pulley. The Flex Fuel Taurus uses a unique Motocraft AWS FA-32C spark plug to prevent pre-ignition and overheating. Compared to conventional spark plugs, the Flex Fuel Taurus spark plug has a wider electrode to disperse heat better. The Flex Fuel Taurus also uses a specially formulated engine oil that is compatible with methanol fuel. Now, please stop the tape here and answer review questions 10 through 12 in your reference book. We'll give the correct answers when you restart the tape. The correct answer to review question 10 is, purging the carbon canister is performed by the vapor management valve, VMV. For question 11, the correct answer is the vapor control valve senses the change in pressure of the fuel tank when the fuel filler cap is removed. The correct answer to question 12 is the crankshaft position, CKP sensor, provides crankshaft position and speed information. Maintenance and service procedures for the Flex Fuel Taurus are very similar to dedicated unleaded gasoline models. Here are the major differences. Change the oil and filter every three months or 3,000 miles. However, when it's time to change the filter, use the same oil filter as specified for dedicated unleaded gasoline engines. A special engine oil, Mobile Synthetic XO-10W30-FFV, is specified for the Flex Fuel Taurus. Do not use oil that is not specially formulated to be compatible with the corrosive nature of methanol. Even engine oils for previous flex fuel vehicles should not be used. Only mobile synthetic XO-10W30-FFV or equivalent should be used in the 1993 flex fuel Taurus. When replacing spark plugs, be sure to use Motocraft AWSFA-32C or equivalent. Do not install standard type plugs as they may cause pre-ignition and engine damage. The cold start injector and spray bar assembly can be removed from the throttle body. However, neither the injector nor the spray bar can be serviced separately. Exercise care when installing the spray bar into the throttle body. Excessive force can damage the injector and spray bar. Exercise patience and caution. This is a difficult procedure. It may take several tries to locate the spray bar hole. You can use the Rotunda Fuel Injector Tester 113-00001 to check methanol injectors. Be sure to use 100% gasoline, however, as the test fluid. If a mixture of gasoline and methanol is used, the corrosive effects of methanol may damage the tester. If testing reveals that a fuel injector requires cleaning, call the Ford Technical Hotline at 1-800-826-4694 for directions on the correct type of cleaning fluid to be used with methanol-compatible fuel injectors. The Flex Fuel Taurus fuel tank cannot be drained through the filler tube. 
Use the special quick disconnect fuel drain tube along with Rotunda Fuel Storage Tanker 034-00020. See the reference book index for complete fuel tank draining procedures. One final note of caution, do not modify the flexible fuel system or components and do not replace parts with those not specifically designed for use with methanol. Now, please stop the tape here and answer review questions 13 through 15 in your reference book. We'll give the correct answers when you restart the tape. The correct answer to review question 13 is C. The oil change interval for a flex fuel Taurus is 3,000 miles or three months, whichever comes first. For question 14, the correct answer is C. A special oil is required due to the corrosive nature of methanol fuel. The correct answer to question 15 is the Flex Fuel Taurus fuel pump has an additional fuel drain tube to drain the fuel tank. This section will demonstrate diagnostic steps unique to the flexible fueled Taurus. Three new diagnostic trouble codes, DTC, have unique application to the 1993 Flex Fuel Taurus. Refer to the reference book for three additional new codes that also apply to other vehicles and thus will not be covered here. Let's assume a customer concern is hard starting. You verify the concern and record DTC 138. Remember, this indicates a failure in the cold start injector circuit. Possible causes include an open in the cold start harness circuit, a short to power in the CSI harness circuit, damaged CSI assembly, or damaged PCM. Use the 1993 Powertrain Control Emissions Diagnosis Manual to diagnose the cold start system. Referring to the Diagnostic Routines Index, we see under Starting Concerns that we should refer to chart number 2. Following the diagnostic steps in flowchart 2, we see that since DTC 138 fault is indicated, we should go to the diagnostic subroutines. The EEC 4 diagnostic trouble code charts show that testing for diagnostic trouble code 138 begins with pinpoint test HB26. Pinpoint test HB26 checks the voltage between the vehicle power pin at the cold start injector vehicle harness connector and the vehicle power ground. Suppose the voltage reading was greater than 10.5 volts. Based on your knowledge of automotive electrical systems, what does this indicate? If you said that the cold start injector is indeed receiving battery voltage, then you are absolutely correct. Thus, pinpoint test HB26 directs you to pinpoint test HB27, which checks continuity of the cold start injector circuit. A resistance test between test pin 14 at the breakout box and the cold start injector pin in the vehicle harness connector is found to be more than 5 ohms. A check of the CSI vehicle harness connector reveals an open circuit at the control pin wire to the connector. Repairing the open circuit and a quick test verifies the repair. Code 138 does not reappear and the concern is resolved. Now, please stop the tape here and answer review questions 16 through 18 in your reference book. We'll give the correct answers when you restart the tape. The correct answer to review question 16 is cold start injector circuit problems are indicated by DTC 138. For question 17, the correct answer is the 1993 powertrain control emissions diagnosis manual is necessary when diagnosing the CSI system. The correct answer to question 18 is pinpoint test HB26 is used to begin diagnosis of DTC 138. Now, let's assume you discover diagnostic trouble code 193, which indicates a failure in the flexible fuel sensor circuit. While performing pinpoint tests, let's assume you are directed to make a fuel composition test to determine the percentage of methanol in the fuel blend. Rotunda Toolkit 014-00770 is required to perform the fuel composition test. 
The kit consists of a fuel drain hose, fuel pump jumper wire, one beaker, one 25 milliliter graduated cylinder, and one 5.7 liter gas can. Begin the fuel composition test with the ignition key off, the flex fuel sensor connected, the breakout box installed, and the PCM connected. Pour a little more than four milliliters of clean water into the beaker. Place the hose end of the fuel drain hose assembly into the gas can. Next, connect the fuel drain hose to the fuel pressure relief valve on the cold start injector. Tighten by turning the connector clockwise. Open the fuel line by turning the on-off valve clockwise. Now, connect the fuel pump jumper wire to the vehicle's self-test connector. With the key on, depress the jumper switch to on position for approximately 5 to 10 seconds and allow slightly more than 20 milliliters of fuel to drain into the gas can. Carefully pour exactly 20 milliliters of fuel into the graduated cylinder. Now, pour enough water from the beaker into the graduated cylinder to bring the total volume to 24 milliliters. Insert the stopper plug into the opening of the graduated cylinder, hold firmly in place to prevent harmful spillage, and shake the cylinder to mix the water and fuel. Allow the liquid to stand and separate. It may take up to three minutes for the methanol and water to mix together and settle to the bottom of the cylinder. The gasoline will rise to the top. Gasoline and water should always separate. If the liquids do not separate, then the fuel is either 100% methanol or a mixture of methanol and water. Note the point on the scale where the methanol water mixture and the gasoline meet. The scale reading minus 4 multiplied by 5 gives the percentage of methanol. For example, if the scale reads 18, then you subtract 4, giving 14. Multiply 14 by 5 and you have 70% methanol. When the test is completed, pour the contents of the graduated cylinder and any fuel remaining in the gas can into the fuel filler of the vehicle. The small amount of water will be quickly absorbed by the methanol in the fuel. In our diagnostic exercise, the calculated methanol percentage did not correspond with the fuel sensor's frequency response for that percentage. Therefore, the fuel sensor was replaced. A quick test verified a correct repair, as no codes were discovered. Now, please stop the tape here and answer review questions 19 through 21 in your reference book. We'll give the correct answers when you restart the tape. The correct answer to review question 19 is C. A failure in the flex fuel sensor will indicate DTC 193. For question 20, the correct answer is B. The fuel composition test is used to determine the percentage of methanol in the fuel. The correct answer to question 21 is C. During the fuel composition test, methanol and water will mix together and settle to the bottom of the 25 milliliter cylinder after three minutes. You may also encounter diagnostic trouble code 141, which indicates the air-fuel mixture may be too lean at wide open throttle. Final diagnostic procedures are not complete at this time for DTC 141 and they are not shown in the 1993 Powertrain Control Emissions Diagnosis Manual. Watch for diagnostic information on DTC 141 in service bulletins, OASIS codes, and similar service publications. That just about completes our introduction to the new 1993 Flex Fuel Taurus. Before we wrap up this video, let's review a few key points. The Flex Fuel Taurus can be operated on 100% unleaded gasoline or a mixture of unleaded gasoline and up to 85% methanol, a fuel called M85. The use of M85 methanol fuel helps improve emissions by reducing hydrocarbons and the formation of ozone. Methanol is widely available in North America from natural gas, coal, wood chips, and garbage, thus reducing our dependence on overseas petroleum. 
The major differences between the 1993 flex fuel Taurus and a dedicated gasoline fueled car is the use of methanol compatible materials to resist the corrosive nature of methanol, a high flow fuel pump and high flow injectors, and the use of new components such as a fuel sensor, cold start injector, vapor control valve, and vapor management valve. When performing maintenance, remember that the 1993 Flex Fuel Taurus requires a special engine oil, Mobile Synthetic XO-10W30-FFV or equivalent. Do not use oils specified for previous flex fuel vehicles or engine oil not formulated to be compatible with methanol. And when changing spark plugs, be sure to install Motorcraft AWSFA-32C or equivalent, which feature a wider electrode for better heat dissipation. There are three new diagnostic trouble codes, 138, 141, and 193. When performing diagnostics, be sure to use the 1993 Powertrain Control Emissions Diagnosis Manual. Alternatively fueled vehicles, such as the 1993 Flex Fuel Taurus, likely will increase in number and variety. Take this opportunity to learn all about these new vehicles, new fuels, and new service procedures. Then you will be prepared to help your Ford dealership achieve high standards of service excellence and customer satisfaction. Finally, remember the Ford National Technical Hotline can help you achieve these goals. If you need assistance in servicing the 1993 3.0 liter flex fuel Taurus, help is just a phone call away at 1-800-826-4694.